Hey everyone, Fast Eddie here. Uh, this video is gonna be the top five rider mistakes. So I already made this video before, but um, last night I was up really late editing all of my videos and I think I accidentally deleted it. So this is gonna be a somewhat of a remake of the video that I made before, but it's no longer on there. So anyways, top five rider mistakes. So the number one mistake that I see a lot of people do, either they're wearing no gear or they're wearing gear that is not actually beneficial if you go tumbling across the ground or sliding across the pavement. So a lot of the times, most people, if they buy anything, they just get a jacket, um, a helmet, uh, maybe some riding shoes. And most of the time that I see people, the jacket is just a normal, even if it's a motorcycle jacket, there's no armor. So that's one big thing that I see that's lacking um, with people's gears. So if you think about if you start tumbling across the ground in case something happens, what is gonna be impacting the ground? That's where you need really good quality armor. A lot of jackets just have this little foam stuff inside of it and it's not armor, it's not even meant to be protective. And it won't do any good anyways. So you need armor in your shoulders, your elbow, your back. Sometimes jackets have chest armor, your hips, your knees. That's just minimum. That is minimum what you would need. And of course, good boots on, a helmet, but um, you definitely want to get a jacket that has the ability to put armor inside of it. And even if your jacket does not come with really good armor, for example, D3O armor or Aero Stitch or BMW gear has equivalent really good armor, um, you could always buy it, right? So um, I bought my girlfriend a D3O shoulder, elbow, and a back protector. It's like the bright orange stuff. You can look it up. Um, I just gave it to her for a present to put inside her jacket because the armor that came in there was just a little foam stuff. So I know a lot of people um, ask me and they say, well, gear is expensive and um, armor is expensive, but they have a $15,000 brand new bike. So it doesn't really add up too much. I mean, people could do whatever they want to do. You could ride it on the t-shirt if you want to, but um, I just say that's a hell of a risk because what's more important? I mean, the jacket you want that's going to protect you does no good in the store. The pants that you want that's gonna save you from losing all your skin or not breaking your knee or your hip, you know, it's not gonna be any good for you if you left it in your closet because it's too hot outside. All right, you know, so gear is very, very important. You could be the best rider in the world and you could still take off down the neighborhood here and someone could still blow a stop sign and hit you. So the only protection you have is what you wear. So you wanna dress for the slide and not the ride, or um, I'd rather sweat than bleed. Uh, last weekend or the weekend before, I can't remember now, um, I just went out to Arizona to meet up with Dan Dan the Fireman. And I made a bunch of uh, videos with him and a bunch of stuff and hanging out with him and his crew. And it was 110 degrees for about five hours when I was riding out there. So what? I will never ride without all of my gear on because even though I'm a pretty good rider, something could happen that's just out of my control. The bike could fail somehow. I could hit some gravel or something. Some car could just run into me. I want to be protected with what I'm wearing, right? So gear, get some good quality gear, right? That's like the number one thing. Next thing, uh, kind of correlated with that, after people take the basic course just to get their license, they think I'm good. There's no way I have to take anything else because I'm a really good rider. I learned all there is to know just by taking a basic course, spending two days in a parking lot going 20. And they think they have the skill, the reflexes, the knowledge, the awareness to handle the motorcycle on the highway. Uh, you don't. The only thing you're good at if you've only taken the basic course and now you wanna go and tack the public roads is you're just good going 20 in a parking lot. And that's about it, right? You really need to take more classes in order to become proficient and to learn things that you don't know. If uh, you just left the basic course and you just got your license, you have absolutely no clue about suspension or how to set it up or why it's important in the first place. You have no idea about passenger riding on how you would have to adjust the suspension to compensate for the extra weight or how to do that. You have no clue about trail braking, really in-depth knowledge about line selection, decrease in radius corners, how the throttle affects the suspension. What? the tire pressure should be and when you should check it and why. There's so many things that you don't know, so only taking the basic course, and that's all you've taken, you're only gonna be pretty good at the basic material, the basic maneuver. So in some, if something happens outside of your 
knowledge and outside of your education, you have no idea what to do. And that's when people, uh, and they freak out and they freeze up because they have no other training, they have no other knowledge. So just like you graduated middle school, then you go on to high school, you graduate high school, then don't you wanna go on and continue to learn, get your associates, your bachelors, your masters, PhD, right? You need to continue learning your education, but it's the same exact thing for motorcycle riding. The basic course to get your license is just absolute basics. You're in a huge empty parking lot with only 11 other riders with two instructors there minimum watching you with no gravel, no potholes, no tar snakes, no cars that are texting, driving around next to you. You're in an extreme safe environment. But now you've passed it, the basic course and then you go buy whatever bike you want and you think now all of a sudden you're good enough to go take off on the highway or go follow your buddies up the twisty road even though you've never been on that road, you've never been faster than 30 miles per hour and your first ride is going up to the mountains. That is insane. You need to continue to take more courses. Once you get comfortable with whatever next level course it is, practice that, right? Go to your local racetrack or go to take another course, go to find a big empty parking lot, like, like get comfortable with the techniques you've learned. Once you start to get comfortable with the techniques and you're doing some miles under your belt, you're taking it easy, you're not just going on a crazy twisty mountain road for the first ride, you slowly build it up to these things. Once you start to get comfortable, that is when you need to take another course. And that's the biggest things that I see that um, people are lacking with courses. They don't take, they don't continue to take courses because most of the time they're thinking, I don't need to. Uh, my buddy, he's a pretty good rider. He'll just show me some stuff. Um, I got my license, I'm good, I can handle it. Um, why would I need to take another course? I ride, a, I ride a Harley, I ride a sport bike. Why would I take a dirt bike course? I don't ride in the dirt. So all these crazy myths and silly suggestions and people say to other people, I've heard people tell people that, oh, you're on a sport bike, man, why would you go to a dirt bike course? That's stupid. And if you're an impressionable, impressionable new rider and this person who said that may be more experienced than you, they might be really fast, they might have a cool bike and blah, 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 whatever else, you're gonna look up to people like that. So that is a bad example of a person that you should not be listening to or it's a really good example of what not to do or what not to say to people. If you think about the best riders in the world, Mark Marquez, Valentino Rossi, Rossi Crutchlow, Pajoja, all these guys go and play in the dirt. Everybody goes motocross, flat tracking, and they ride in the dirt. Jake Gagne, who I met at American Super Camp, he's an amazing dirt bike rider, and now he rides for World Superbike. So it will help you dramatically to learn how to ride in the dirt because you get used to the bike wiggling around and sliding around. So that way, if it happens on your street bike in the middle of a corner that you're not prepared for, you don't freak out, chop the throttle, grab a fistful of front brake, you know, do anything else. You just kind of let the bike do what it's supposed to do and you get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's the benefit of dirt bike riding. And that's just one example. I mean, you could take so many different courses. There's so many courses available. That's why I continue to take so many courses because I need to keep learning. I need to keep developing my skill and keep getting more proficient and more confident in what I'm doing. That's one of the biggest reasons why I'm going to SoCal Supermodel for a fourth time next month. Four times I'll be going to that course and every single time I learn more. Every single time I gain confidence. Every single time I realize something about myself that I didn't realize before. Or Brian, the guy who owns it, he's a professional Supermodel racer. He notices things like, okay, try this. And I would never even think of that because I don't know what I don't know. I'm not a racer, right? He's a professional racer of Supermodel. So he has the knowledge, right? So you attach yourself to these courses, learn as much as you possibly can. And uh, that's what this little analogy means. So one course out of 10, you, a lot of people think they're good, but it's not okay. It's not good enough just to be okay or just to be good out on the public roads. It's too dangerous. You have to totally invest in yourself and really learn how to ride the bike because there's so many things that happened um, that's just usually very preventable. I know a lot of people blow a stop sign and they hit you and they run into you and you can't really do much about that if someone just hits you and there's no way to avoid it. But the majority of people crashing is you crash in a corner. You go wide in a corner and you go flying off a cliff or you go into oncoming traffic and it's all your fault. There's no one else involved. It's just you. You made a mistake, you blew a corner and that's the biggest reason why motorcycles crash. But if there's 10 courses available to you and you've been through nine out of the 10 and you keep on practicing those skills, you're far less likely to get yourself into silly situations because you're learning your skill, you're learning when to push it, you're getting comfortable with your bike, you're learning the, the, you're learning the limits of your bike and yourself in enclosed environments and not out on the public roads. That's another big benefit of training and practicing, finding a parking lot somewhere. A lot of people ask me, how can I find the limits of my bike and my tires? 
Well, hopefully you're not doing that riding down the highway. Hopefully you go to a parking lot and practice. Find a parking lot with really good grip, make a 50 foot diameter circle and just go around the thing, go in circles, see how far you can lean before you feel the tire slide. Take another course with instructors watching you that could give you feedback on how you're doing better. You get to learn yourself, learn more about yourself and about your bike in those types of environments. When people try to find the limits and they're out on the twisty public roads, that is not the place to do that. That's how a lot of people get themselves in trouble and how a lot of people crash. So going right along with that, you can see they're all related. There's one fundamental, fundamental problem with all this stuff and we'll get to that. But number three, practicing. So a lot of people know um, where I am here in San Diego and I go to the same parking lot every single Sunday at eight o'clock, sometimes on Saturday too, and uh, other places to go practice all the time. And maybe seven, eight people out of thousands actually want to message me or they get a hold of me somehow or email me like, hey man, uh, I'll, you go practice every single week like that? Let me come practice with you. Maybe I can learn some stuff. Uh, maybe you can show me a little tip on how to do low speed stuff. Sure, man, no problem. Come on out, let's go practice. But so many people think they're good enough to handle any situation out on the road. So let me ask you this and really answer this for yourself. Be honest. If you knew you would have to do an emergency break a no kidding stop as fast as you can next week because a four-year-old is going to jump out in front of your bike it's going to happen you know 100 percent it's going to happen you have the crystal ball you're psychic it is going to happen there's nothing you could do about it if you knew that was going to happen next week what would you do this week to prepare for that you would probably go out and practice a lot wouldn't you you'd probably go up and test various speeds and see how hard you can get on the brakes. Maybe get a more experienced rider to, to give you coaching and see how you can stop as fast as you can. That's what you would do, right? You would practice. But since you don't know that, you don't practice. But that could happen anytime you jump on the bike, something like that could happen. A car door can open up, someone could blow through a stop sign, someone could jump out in front of you. It could happen anytime you go ride, yet people don't practice that stuff. How is that possible? Do you not think it's gonna happen to you? Do you think you're good enough? So sometimes I see people, they're out practicing aggressive braking, really emergency braking for like a half hour. Good up, good for them, that's awesome. And I ask them, so you got really good after a half hour, so the, so the 50th one you did, if that's the one you needed, if a kid jumps out in front of you, you'd probably be pretty good. However, what if the kid jumped out in front of you and you're only as good as your first one? And that's the one you would have done on your way to this parking lot this morning because this is your first time practicing in three months and you think you're automatically gonna remember the last time you practiced. This is a perishable skill. Swerving is the emergency procedure you need to practice a lot in case a car pull out in front of you. Emergency braking, you have to practice these things constantly. Every time I get on the bike, I do at least two or three. At a minimum, every time I get on the bike, two or three emergency braking, really getting hard on the brakes, seeing what that feels like, making sure everything is good. See if I'm staying relaxed, am I looking up, am I looking down? Swerving, same thing. Practice a really aggressive swerve. Get that bike the heck out of the way in case stupid comes out in front of you. You have to practice. You have to get out there and put in the time to do it. A lot of people want um, uh, microwave style results. I want a six pack abs. So just tell me one exercise to do and I just want, I just want to get six pack abs, go to the beach, show it off. There's no secret answer. <laughs> Um, like I've heard someone say before, abs are made in the kitchen, first of all, so it mostly depends on what you eat. If you eat cheeseburgers and pizza and Oreos and Cheetos all day and gulls it all down with a three gallon bottle of Coke, then it ain't gonna work out too well. You're not gonna have no abs, right? But so you're not eating crap and then there is no secret workout, just work out, but you just have to be consistent with it. There's no fast way to do anything. You, you can watch any video, read any book you want on how to do a U-turn. First hand perspective, passenger perspective, drone, a pigeon flying by, every camera. You can watch all those videos all day long, but it will not teach you not one thing about what it feels like to do a U-turn. You have to put in the time to practice. So many times I get emails and people say, oh my God, it looks so easy. How do you do that? How do you do the U-turn? How did you get your knee down on that Panigale, that V4S Panigale you rode the other way? How did you do that? How did you get your knee down on a Harley? That big, huge street glide that weighs 900 pounds, how did you do that? You make it look so easy. Well, it is easy because I put in probably thousands and thousands and thousands of hours practicing this stuff. Practice so much where it's very difficult to make a mistake. That's the level of, it's not okay to be good. It's not, it's not even okay to be pretty good at something. You have to master these techniques. 
Swerving, stopping, cornering, those are the three big ones you really have to practice and master. In order to master something, you can't master something by practicing once a week for five minutes in the parking lot. No, 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 you need to put in hours. If you wanna be a good rider, capable of handling almost any situation. You go around a blind corner and there's gravel straight across the ground. You didn't see it as you approached the corner because it's a blind corner, but at the exit of the corner, just gravel all the way across the whole road. Would you know what to do? Would you know what to do? Ask yourself the question. Or you go around a corner and there's a truck stalled right there. That has happened to me multiple times. Gravel and a car. I go around a blind corner and the car is just parked, just stopped. Something happened with the engine, the, the thing just stalled. Would you know what to do in that situation? Why would you wait for that to actually happen to start practicing emergency braking in corners? How do you stop the bike extremely fast if you're already halfway through a corner leaned over? You better practice that stuff. Life-saving skills, so practice. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the time. If you don't put in the time and something happens, you're gonna be overwhelmed and you're gonna panic, and by the time you're thinking about what to do, it's too late, you're already gonna hit it. It's gonna be too late. Another huge reason, or another big thing, riders mistake, and you could see this is not new riders. This is not top five rider mistakes just for beginner riders. I see people do this that's been riding for 50 years. I know a guy who emailed me, he's like, hey, I have 800,000 miles on my bike, I never crash, so and I don't wear any gear. So all everything of what you're saying um, doesn't apply to me. Okay, good for you, you're lucky. So if you ride around uh, just around the block or you go on whatever you're doing and you go 20 miles per hour, okay. But most of the time, top five rider mistakes that I see, they're speed. They go way too damn fast. They try to keep up. So I, got a, so I took the basic course. And now I go buy a sport bike because all my buddies have sport bikes. And I want to be cool with all my buddies. It's a, it's a lot of validation I want from other people. I want people to let me know. I want to get a status. You know, I want to buy a big $30,000 bike to let people know I have money or whatever. I got a sport bike. I want to be cool. I want to be fast. So I show up with them and I try to keep up with them. I wind up crashing. I don't have the skills to handle this bike out on these roads and all my buddies already been doing it because that's why I got into riding because I see them on sport bikes all the time. I want to try to keep up with them. I try to go way over my head way too soon, way too fast and people get in trouble like that all the time. Why are you rushing to go so fast? You have to learn the technique. Technique comes first, then the speed will come. So if this is your technique, your speed needs to be below, right? Your speed will follow your technique. Here's technique, here's your speed. Technique goes up, speed will go up, right? Here's your technique, this is the speed. If your technique is here, your speed is only gonna be here. But a lot of times, this is what I see people do. This is their speed and this is the technique. Nope. This is how people crash all the time. Get your technique up here. Now, if you want to go fast, you can. If you want to do really slow speed maneuvers, you also can because your technique is so high. You could jump on anybody's bike and do a U-turn or anything else because your technique is up here. This is what you've been focusing on. This is the main idea. Don't worry about the bike's technology. Don't worry about what type of bike it is. Get your technique up extremely high. The speed will come. You go to a racetrack, you go in the parking lot going two miles per hour. Your choice, you can do whatever you wanna do. You're able to handle the speed on any bike. But so many people, it's the exact opposite. They've taken a basic course, they barely practice, they have a thousand miles on their bike or 10,000 miles on their bike. And their technique is here because they think they're done learning and they don't need to practice. Yet they go this fast and they have absolutely no clue how to handle the bike going that speed. No idea. Can't swerve, can't stop, can't corner because your technique is here. Same speed, but if your technique is here, you'd be able to manage those three things and you probably would be able to handle it, right? So think about that. It's always technique first. Focus on yourself. Don't worry about the damn bike. Just put a crash bar on it, protect the levers in case it tips over, forget about the bike. No need to buy an exhaust or lights or carbon fiber BS. All that crap is worthless. It will not help you corner. It will not help you stop faster or swerve more efficiently. It's just a waste. You need to invest in yourself. Gear, courses, Practice, slow the heck down, take it easy. There's no, re there's no need to try to go so damn fast. Get the technique up, the speed will come. The speed will come once you get your technique higher, promise. And the last thing is steering, right? So misunderstanding, I don't know how to steer the bike. If I wanna go left, don't I just go like this? Yeah, if you're going like five miles per hour or less, you just turn the handlebars and the bike is gonna go in the direction the tire is pointing, no problem. But once you start going faster, 15, 20 miles per hour, which is most, for most people, 80% of the time, you're probably going more than 20 miles per hour, right? 
except for about 20 feet before your driveway, then you go less than 20 to pull into your driveway. So for 90% of the time, most people, they're going more than 20 miles per hour when they're riding around. Now, this type of steering is not gonna work. Now you counter your steering. And again, I've said this before in a lot of videos and I reply back to people's comments. It doesn't matter if you believe it. It doesn't matter if you think it's true. It doesn't matter if you think it's false. All that is irrelevant. It works all the time for any motorcycle, no matter what. If you wanna go right and you're going more than 15, 20 miles per hour, just push right. Push forward on the handlebar, the bike will lean to the right and you're going to the right. I don't care if you think it's true or not. I challenge you to go do an experiment. Don't believe what I say. Research what I say. Do an experiment for yourself. Go any speed more than 20 miles per hour. If you push left on that handlebar and the bike does anything besides go left, well, you need to call up Sweden or wherever it is that does the Nobel Prize because you're about to win a prize in physics because you just discovered something that is impossible and you're gonna be famous. You're gonna get a million dollars, you're gonna get the award, you're gonna do everything. If you push left on a motorcycle going more than 20 miles per hour, you're going left. There's no if, ands, I don't care. You could jump on the bike all day long. You might be able to get it to move a little bit by moving your body, but it's not gonna make you go through a corner more than 20 miles per hour if you don't do something with the handlebars. And I hate the word counter steering because it's counterintuitive. If I push left, doesn't the front tire go right? Yeah, for a second, it just gets the bike to lean over. This is what the bike does in slow motion. You push left, it goes the wrong way, it destabilizes it, then it leans to the left and you're going to the left. Again, you don't have to understand it. Most people don't understand how a computer works or their cell phone works or the GPS on your cell phone doesn't understand how it connects to the satellite. People understand a lot of things, but they still use it. They still use GPS every day. So you don't have to understand counter steering, but it still works and you still have to do it. The simplest way, who cares if you want to understand it or not? Just push right and you will go right. So why is this one of the top five rider mistakes? Because people don't believe it and they're unwilling to accept that that's true. So if they get themselves in trouble going through a corner, say you're going through a corner at 50 miles per hour. So you wanna go left and you're starting to go like this and you're like, oh man, why am I going wide? And all of a sudden guardrail. If you know, you don't have to understand it, but if you just know, if I look left, I push forward left. I push left on the handlebars, that bike is going left. So if you go into a corner too hot, what are the two things to do? Just look further where you wanna go and just push harder. That bike will lean and continue to go in that direction. That's the only thing required. Push forward on the handlebar. Again, people not believe in that, it don't work. I use my body. I, I just jump off the bike like this and the bike gets me through the corner. They're just unaware. People, there's a lot of people who do not pay, atten pay attention to what they're actually thinking about and what they're actually feeling. So many times when I'm out practicing, I, I tell people, I, I can't, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know where you are actually looking or where your weight is on your body. Are you actually counterbalancing? Is the weight all on your butt? Or are you actually putting your weight on the outside foot peg? Are you actually looking up through the corner? Or are you looking straight down in front of your front tire? I don't know. Are you actually feeling the throttle? Are you actually raising it up a little bit and feeling your body shift to the other side if you're doing low speed maneuvers? Or are you just kind of sitting down on the bike and just kind of looking right there instead of way over there? I don't know those things. You have to be your own critic and you have to be paying attention to what you're actually doing. Really think about what you're doing. Are you making a decision to actually turn the bike or are you just hoping the bike will turn? For every single corner, it should be a conscious decision for a long time until you get so proficient we don't have to think about it. But for a long time, it's gonna, you're gonna have to go like this. You should be. Okay, you're going left. So I wanna start on the outside. You're turning your head, everything looks good. Okay, I wanna turn the bike now. It should be a conscious decision when you decide to push forward on the left handlebar to make that bike go left. It shouldn't be, oh, I hope I make it through the corner. Who's in control of the bike? The bike? Is the bike riding you or are you riding the bike? It's just a machine. You're the rider, you're responsible. You're the one who has to know what you're doing. It should be a conscious choice when you do anything, not just hope it's gonna happen. So if you look at all these different things, right? People not wearing gear, who cares about courses? That's pointless, I don't need to practice. I go as fast as I want, and yeah, I steer the bike by moving my legs around. All these things have a big thing in common, and that is your ego. So many times, people ego get in the way where they can't accept, someone may know more than me. Someone may be a better rider than me. Someone may have more knowledge than me. And there's no way I'm gonna accept that because that's what leads me to all this stuff. Why would I go to a course with an instructor that's tremendously better than me because I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be as good as a rider anymore. I, I, I ride around with my buddies and I'm the fastest rider out of my buddies and that makes me feel really good. So I'm not gonna 
put myself in a situation where I'm vulnerable, where people think I'm not as fast. This is what a lot of people think. That's why they don't go to courses. That's why a lot of people don't go to courses. I don't want to be humbled. I don't want to be embarrassed in front of my peers because this guy's better than me, or I don't want to get shown up um, because this little 12 year old on this little race bike is lapping me around the track. Because I, I like the feeling of being the best, the fastest rider in my little group of friends. If you're the fastest rider out of your group of friends, you're in the wrong group. If you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. Go to a different room where you're the dumbest person, where you're the least aware, you're the least educated. I'd rather spend all my time with Neil deGrasse Tyson, Lawrence Krauss, Ben Shapiro, Sam Harris, all these guys talking to them because every one of them are insanely more intelligent than me when it comes to so many different things I'm interested in, right? That's where I would love to be. That's where I'd love to be the most is stimulating conversations. How's the weather and the football game and all this crap I don't care about? That means nothing. I like to have fun, interesting conversations about things that are not just boring, simple things. If you do that, great, that's fine. However, I love to go to courses so much because I love the feeling of being around people that are just so incredibly good. It is so inspiring to me. So Lee Parks, the guy who wrote, that's where I keep all my motorcycle books, that's why I keep pointing over there. Lee Parks, the guy who wrote Total Control, I went to the track, Horse Thief Milo, Willow Springs, look it up, Total Control, Horse Thief Milo, Milo. it's called um, the Track Clinic. He was on his little 150 Honda race bike. So 150, at the time I had a Hayabusa, 1300 bike, 1300 cc bike, full exhaust, crazy loud, crazy powerful, I'm flying around the track, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Here comes Lee Parks on his little 150, lapping me. Not just once, but like every five laps, he just kept lapping me on a 150. Please don't think the bike means anything. It is all the skill of the rider. And I was like, this is amazing. How is this guy so fast? It is unbelievable. There are so many people I know that are tremendously better at me than everything. At my riding skills, at my knowledge, riding at the track, everything. So many people that are faster than me. I absolutely love being around people like that because I'm going to learn something. They're better than me. I can pick up what they're getting, right? I'm not content. I'm not satisfied with just being... Oh, I created the Moto Jitsu Club and I'm the red belt and I could do all that stuff, drag me, do whatever, no problem. But I'm not satisfied, that's not enough. I wanna be better. And this is just street riding. Then there's dirt bike riding. Oh my God, a whole nother ball game where I'm just like an absolute bare minimum beginner. That's why I keep putting myself in situations where I'm constantly feeling humbled and vulnerable to the point where that's the only way I'm able to learn. If I go into a class, I think I know everything about the class. You think I'm gonna learn anything? You think I'm gonna pay attention to the teacher or actually read the chapters or do my homework? I'm like, oh, I already know this stuff. I got it. Or go in there with the attitude like, man, I'm about to learn something new today. Feed me, give me some knowledge. Ooh, that's interesting. Let me take a lot of notes. Let me really pay attention with the teacher saying, let me ask a question. I don't understand. Can you stay after break? I don't wanna go on my dinner break real quick. Can you, can you stay after? Can I answer you this? Can you show me this in the book? What does this mean? Is there another book you could reference? Have that type of attitude. Be willing, be very hungry. Like, I wanna learn, keep teaching me, keep teaching me, give me more information, yep, that's not good enough, give me more, give me more. If you had that attitude, oh my God, everybody would be taking courses, everybody would be out in parking lots practicing everywhere. Because you're willing to accept that there's people that are smarter than you and better than you at something, and you're not afraid to put yourself in that situation. So that's a big, big reason that a lot of these things, these, um, things come in front. I'm just trying to impress somebody. I'm, trying, I'm too worried about what other people think about me, so I'm gonna go by the R1 when I should be riding the R3. I don't, I don't like, I don't, I, I'm unwilling to put myself in a situation where people are gonna make fun of me. I don't like that. Uh, it hurts too much. My, I'm so, I, I can't do that. I need to buy the biggest, fastest, powerfulest bike just so other people look at me like, cool man, I guess you're a really cool guy. You bought a whatever bike and you have absolutely no idea how to ride. It is so inspiring to me when I see someone and they are on a Ninja 250 or a KTM 390 Duke or 400cc or less bike, whatever it is, and they could ride the crap out of that thing. I love that so much. I love taking my girlfriend's 390 Duke, which is my track bike. I love taking that bike more out in the twisties because it is so satisfying. I just love it that I take off and go riding around. There's a bunch of people around. There's an R1, CBR 1000, whatever the heck kind of bike behind me. And I'm just keeping right up with them or just taking off from them and they can't keep up. And the straight lines are right behind me because the bike's fast. KTM 390 Duke is a single cylinder, 30 horsepower bike, right? That's it, stock, completely stock. Straight lines are easy, guys. You just go like that. But once you start getting to the corners, that's where all the skill comes in. That's where the technique comes in. 
and they just pull away. I don't even see them anymore. In the mirrors, I just, uh, nope, I'll wait till the next straightaway, then they'll come up, right? It's fun to do that because it demonstrates, please don't think the bike is fast. Either the rider is fast or the rider is not fast. The bike is irrelevant. It does not matter, right? Just like I mentioned Lee Parks, riding around the track, lapping me, and I'm on a Hayabusa. So again, a lot of these things have in common. So many people make these mistakes. They're unwilling to accept. I may not be the best rider in the world. And even if I were to think that, well, there's no way I'm gonna to try to learn. I'm just gonna deny it, right? Denial is a big, big thing. I'm just gonna put it to the side. I don't wanna think about it no more. I'll just keep, in, keep on hanging out with the people that I know are really um, new riders, and I'm just a little bit more experienced than them. So they look to me for advice, and I, I, I feel it feels like really good to think that they think that I'm really, really good, even though I don't think I'm really good, but I'm afraid that to admit that to myself because I'd be humbled. You see what I'm saying? So people are just unwilling. People don't have an openness to them, like, teach me more knowledge, I wanna learn, you're better than me, you're smarter, let me do this. Like Bill Nye, the science guy said, everybody you meet knows something you don't know. So if you learn from them, they'll bring out the best in both of you. So I hope this made sense. These are the top five rider mistakes that I have seen in my experience. So as a reminder, I have over 140,000 miles in five years on a motorcycle. I had a CBR 1000, a Hayabusa, a Speed Triple, DRZ 400 Supermoto, F700 GS, now 1200 GS, and then the KTM 390 Duke. So all these different bikes, so many different miles, all these different courses. I've been through 19 courses in, less, in five years. All these things, all these people I've met, all these conversations I've had, these are the top five things that I noticed that are just reoccurring. And the fundamental behind the scenes of why these things happen that I've noticed for the most part is ego. I don't have to wear gear, I'm good enough. It ain't gonna happen to me. Hear that about it, ain't gonna happen to me. I'm not worried about it. I, I took my basic course to get my license. You're going to what? SoCal Supermodel? Is that where you play around in the dirt and the cement? Why would I go that? That's stupid. This is what people think. Why would I practice in the parking lot, dude? Aren't you hot? Aren't you bored? What is that gonna do? I, I ride on the street. It's not gonna help me at all going five miles per hour. Uh, I could go pretty fast. I can keep up. Oh yeah. Oh, I've been riding good. Yeah, I wanna go to the track day. I wanna learn how to be fast so I can keep up. Yeah, I'm good. Let's go. I've never been on the shop before, but I'm not gonna say that. I I'm good enough. Let's go, right? Oh yeah, I just steer, you know, I go like this. It gets me through the corner. I have no clue. I never read a book in my life. I never watch any videos. I don't actually study. I don't try to learn anything. People have this attitude and that's the fundamental reason behind most of these things. So I'm just looking at the back here. I wrote some notes. Yep, I don't need gear. I don't need to practice. I can keep up, impress others. They're trying to fit in, right? I want, I want people to think of me as a good old boy. I'm part of the club. I'm part of the guys, right? Everybody's got a thousand cc bike. This has happened probably 10 or more times. And this is the last thing I'm gonna say. I show up for a ride down here in San Diego. It's a monthly ride or whatever, right? Show up for a ride. I am the only non-sport bike there. The only non-sport bike. Everybody else is on a sport bike. Either a naked sport bike or a full-blown sport bike. Gear, no gear, all kinds of crap. I'm on my big old adventure motorcycle. And, and, most, and a lot of times with a passenger. So I'm on a big, huge adventure bike with the passenger, everybody else's sport bikes. You know what all the looks like? This is what I get people say. They go like this. Did you see that guy? Right past and then they're like, okay, uh, hey everybody, uh, we have three groups going today. You know, going on this 30 mile twisty road down to the turnaround point down there. Uh, we have three groups. We have the fast group that wants to go a little bit more aggressive. We have the group that's just okay. They're kind of comfortable with the skills. And then we have a new group of people that are uh, unfamiliar with the area or they just got a new bike and they're just waiting to break it in. Maybe they have new tires or they're just new riders in this first couple of times out in the twisty. So three groups. Uh, the first group, the faster group, um, Fast Eddie, that, that guy right there, he's gonna lead the fast group. So everybody who wants to go in the fast group, everybody go over there to him. I'm like, hey everybody, come on over, come on over. And I get, you know, 10 people to come with me, 10 people go with the medium group, 10 people go with the slower group. And I'm like, hey everybody, everybody been on the road before, you have gear, you got your tire pressure check, I talk to people, blah, blah. And I just kind of give a little brief, you know, hand signals, who's gonna be the leader, I'll be the leader. Well, anybody wanna volunteer to be the sweeper, you're the last guy in case something happens, you're the one pulling over, blah, blah, help you go. And people are like this. Because they're thinking, Really? You're gonna be the leader of the fast group? I thought I was gonna go out for a fun ride and uh, 
Now I got this guy I'm gonna be following behind on this big stupid GS and he's got a passenger. Oh, but man, is it fun once we take off and we're going straight line. Everybody's just like, right? Cause yeah, it's a lot of fun riding a bike, riding around. But once you start hitting the corners, that's where it's really fun. If you love speed, F1 cars, like Formula One cars, they're faster than, motor than motorcycles. They're way faster, right? But the cool thing about bikes is leaning. You get to lean the bike. That's the fun part, right? Cornering is the fun part, and that's where it takes all the skill. So once we take off, I'm riding my big, huge adventure bike with my passenger. All these bikes, this is what happens. We start going in the corners. Here's the, here's the line of everybody. And then the straightaway. Corners. Just drift away. I don't even see them anymore. Straight away, they're right behind me. Then we get to wherever we get to, the gas station, whatever else, people go up and be like, oh man, is your bike supercharged? Whoa, how's it flow so fast? This is unbelievable, man. I was like, dude, I never went above 75 the whole way here. I'm like, what? I had to go like, man, like really damn fast just to try to keep up. And I was like, yeah, because you go really fast in the straightaway, but there's a corner coming up, and I see all you guys. Ooh, straightaway, corner. Straightaway, corner. Right? They don't know what they're doing for corner. I was like, yeah, I just kept the, I never went above 75. But for the corners, you slow down to 20 and I could go into the same corner at 40. Big difference. It's all about cornering. So that's when the conversation starts because um, I like to do most things by leading by example. I'll just show you what I could do. I'll just show you, I'll go, I'll go out and lead the fast group guys and we're going at a really good pace. We're not going insane, but we're going at a good pace, right? the faster group guys and we all get out there but by the time that group gets back to the gas station everybody finally shows up and then it's then it's the conversation starts like oh man where'd you learn how to do that stuff you're man i couldn't believe you went into that corner that quickly and weren't you and you got a, and you got a passenger on a big huge adventure bike i'm like yeah man take this course check this out let's do this let's go let's get some chalk out let me draw some line selection stuff right and that and that's how things get going and that's what i've been doing for like three years now right i've been doing things like that all the time it's so much fun but have an open mind and be willing so try to leave your ego at the door whenever you walk outside your house or just try to get rid of it altogether, right? Just throw it off your balcony, throw it outside, throw it in the ocean. Uh, it's unnecessary and it's preventing you from really learning and getting your potential higher of what you're actually capable of. It's just a big barrier in your way. And once you can lose it, you're, you'll, you'll be amazed at what you're actually be able to do because your openness, your open-mindedness um, will improve your quality of life, not just riding, but in every aspect of your life. So thanks.